The objective is to use systems of equations to solve word problems. A class of 449 students went on a field trip. They took 11 vehicles, some cars and some buses. Find the number of cars and the number of buses they took if each car holds three students and each bus holds 55 students. You have to solve this by a system of equations so you know that there are two equations to set up. Before you can do anything you have to know that you are using cars and buses. Those are your variables. So what letter could you use to represent a car? C for car. And what letter would you represent a bus? B. We have 449 students total. They took 11 vehicles. So we know that 11 vehicles means that if I add the number of cars and I add the number of buses, what should it equal? How many vehicles were used in total? 11. So if I add these two together, I'm going to come up with what number? 11. So I'm adding cars and buses. C plus B equals 11. Now we have 449 students from up here. 449 students went on the field trip. We've already taken care of 11 vehicles and cars and buses. Find the number of cars and the number of buses they took if each car holds three students and each bus holds 55 students. We know that they took 449 students. So in our next equation, we're going to come up with the number of students that we're looking for in each vehicle. So here's our next variable, and here's the next one for the bus. All right, we'll come down here. Now, we don't need all of that. We just need the bus. All right. Each car holds three students. Here's a car. It holds three students. The bus holds 55 students. How many did they take on the trip altogether? 449. So we know that there's going to have to be a 449 in here at the end. What operation would I do if I were combining all the people that went in a car and all of the people that went in a bus? You would add. But now each car holds how many students? Three. three. So wouldn't three times the number of cars give me how many students went in a car? Yes or no? Yes. So each car holds three. And then each bus holds 55. There is your equation. Next step is to solve this system of equations. You can solve it by elimination. You can solve it by substitution. It makes no difference. To solve it by substitution, you would have to get one of these variables by itself. We've done that before. Or you could multiply through one of these equations by something that will make it match the other, whether it be the car or the bus. What I'm going to do is to multiply the top one by 3 so that we can cancel out the cars. So we're going to drop down uh, the car, and we'll use that down here. And then we're going to drop down the bus. We will use that down here. Maybe not. There we go. So let's just go with the variables from this point. We end up with 3C plus 3B equals 33. Multiplying the top equation by 3. On the bottom, there is nothing to do. It's not going to change.
So 3C plus 55B equals 449. What operation must I do in order to get the C's to cancel out? Subtraction. subtraction. So when I subtract, these C's are gone. And then you'll have to do 3 minus 55, which is a negative 52. And then 33 minus 49 is going to give me a negative 416. Divide negative 416 by negative 52. What is that? It is 8. What does 8 represent? The number of buses. What do we have to find next? The number of cars. What can we do with B equals 8 to find the number of cars? Plug it in where? One of the first two equations. Which one is easiest? the top one. So that is simply C plus B equals 11. C plus B equals 11. And we're putting in an 8 in place of B. And move the 8 over, make it subtraction, and you'll get an answer of 3. This is not an intersection point on a graph. We're just going to identify what they are and write the answer. For the number of buses, we have 8. And for the number of cars, we have 3. Some of these problems will not be just as simple as finding the number of buses and the number of cars. At some point, you may have to answer this question. How many more buses were taken than cars? the answer would be what? Five. Five. And if you were to write these down for your final answers and not put anywhere in there the number five, you would have done all of that for nothing because you did not answer the question. How many more buses are there than cars? The answer would be five in that case. If the problem is presented to you as it was up here, then the answer would just be 11 or not 11, but 8 and 3. You must answer the question that is being asked in the problem. A class used buses, cars and buses, to go on a field trip. They used 10 vehicles to go on the trip. Each car holds 5 students and each bus holds 30 students. If 250 students went on the trip, then how many of each type of vehicle did the class use? So we know we have cars and we have buses. So we'll leave that there and leave this here. What can I do for my first equation if they took 10 vehicles? C plus B equals 10. Car plus bus equals 10. 10 vehicles total. So now we want to go through here and duplicate some stuff. drag this down to here and drag this down to here. We don't need all of that ink. Okay. On the second equation, what am I going to use? You've already used 10. You're not going to use that number again. You have 5, 30, and 250. 5C and 30B, what are we doing with those? Putting 5 with the car, 30 with the bus. Because each car holds 5 students and each bus holds 30 students. What am I doing with 5C and 30B? We are adding those. What are we doing after that? 
equals 250. 250 students went on the trip. There are five students per car and 30 students per bus. If you add the number of students that are taking cars with the number of students taking buses, then you'll get 250. Five students per car, five times car, plus 30 times bus should equal 250. You must solve this system. You can solve it by elimination or substitution. Here is substitution. If I want to solve this by substitution, then here's what's going to happen. I am going to isolate either the car or the bus by moving the other one to this side and changing the operation because this is the easiest equation to deal with. There won't be any division necessary by changing this equation. So in order to do that, I must first choose which one am I going to move. I'm going to move the car over to this side. So let's go through here and copy this. Well, it's not going to let us copy just that. So we're going to use our variables. This goes over to this side, change the operation. So we have a bus equal to 10 minus a car. This expression, 10 minus C, can be inserted where you see a bus in the second equation. When you do that, you have 5 car plus 30 times bus, but bus is no longer just the bus, it is 10 minus C. And then you solve this equation. 5c plus 30 times 10 is 300. 30 times minus c is minus 30c equals 250. Combine like terms. You have a 5c and a minus 30c. What is 5c minus 30c? negative 25 C and we still have the plus 300 you're gonna move that plus 300 to the right side and change the operation it becomes minus 300 what is 250 minus 300 negative 50 so I will divide negative 50 by negative 25. And what do I come up with? Positive 2. So we have two cars that are going on the trip. Since you have C equals 2, you can come back to the top right here and plug it in. Car equals 2. So if car equals 2 and we're adding that to one bus, that should equal 10. 10 minus 2 is going to give me an answer of 8. We took 8 buses and 2 cars. So the way you would write your final answer is this. 8 buses, 2 cars. Whoops, zooming in. There we go. Jasmine spent $98.80 on shirts. Fancy shirts cost $22.20, and plain shirts cost $13.60. If she bought a total of six, then how many of each kind did she buy? Okay. Fancy shirt, plain shirt. So we have plain and fancy, or in this case, fancy and plain. How many shirts did she buy total? She bought six shirts, which means if I add the number of fancy and the number of plain, she will have six. 
what variable can we use to represent fancy? F. And what about plain? P. Okay, now we get into the cost. So we're going to use this here and this here, maybe. I guess we can still use that. Maybe not. So we'll take that away. We'll just go with the variable. We have fancy shirts that cost $22.20. So $22.20 fancy shirt. <clears throat> We're going to add that with the cost multiplied by the number of plain shirts. A plain shirt is $13.60. 1360p. The total that she spent on shirts altogether is $98.80. Strange looking zero there. There we go. Now we have to solve this system of equations. We can solve this by elimination, or we can solve it by substitution. It would probably be easier to solve it by substitution. So let's get either this one or this one by itself. I'm going to get the fancy shirts by themselves. I'm moving fancy shirts to this side and changing the operation such that I am left with a plain shirt equals 6 minus a fancy shirt. And I will insert this expression into this equation where I see a P, which is right here. So that would be 2220F plus 1360 times the quantity 6 minus F equals $98.80. You have to simplify. Distribute this 1360 through to those two items. So 2220F plus 1360 times 6 is 8160. And then 1360 times minus F is minus 1360F equals 9880. On the left hand side you have two F terms. You have 2220 and then minus 1360. Combine those to come up with $8.60 F and then the plus 8160 equals 9880. Move the 8160 over to the right hand side. Leave this $8.60 F where it's at, and you have $98.80 on the right. Move this over to the right-hand side and make it minus $81.60. So $8.60 F equals the result of that subtraction, $98.80 minus $81.60 is 1720. So F is 1720 divided by 860. What is that? When you divide those two numbers, what is that? Two. So two fancy shirts. She bought two fancy shirts. And remember from up here, fancy shirt plus plain shirt equals 6. And we know that fancy shirt is 2 plus plain shirt equals 6. P equals 6 minus 2, which means we're going to come up with a total of 4 plain shirts. You would express your answer in the following way. Plain is 4 and fancy 
is 2. You must write out what it is that the numbers are equivalent to because if you start using variables like x, y, m, p, q, whatever, that have nothing to do with both of these items, I'll have no clue what it is you've just solved for.